All right, let's go. John chapter 14. Let not your heart be troubled. So, well, not have heart trouble. He just told Peter, he said, hey, listen, you're going to deny me. You're not going to stand up for me. Somebody here is going to betray me. One of you twelve. Don't let your heart be troubled. Be at peace. Ye believe in God? Believe ye believe also in me. Jesus never said he was God. How's that? You believe God? Believe me. I think that sounds like I'm God. I'm really sure that I have a no John, Job 5 7 and James 2 19. In fact, I got James 19 twice written here. That must be a good one. In my father's house are many rooms. If you not. Did I get that right? Because I heard a Baptist preacher say rooms. My God is so rich. My God is so powerful. He ain't giving me a room. An earthly. Uh, earth, now listen. An earthly father will give his child a room. Most do. You know, go to your room. Clean your room. That's my daughter's room. That's my son's room. But God, my father's house are many mansions. That's kind of interesting because when you read in the layout of New Jerusalem, there's nothing spoken about these mansions. There's the wall. There's the streets. But in my father's house are many mansions. You know, I... The day I got saved, I didn't know anything about mansions. I didn't know anything about New Jerusalem. I just knew, you know what? I don't want to go to hell. I want to get out of hell. And I preach today, salvation is, you know, you're going to hell. You need to get out of hell. I don't go on the street for, hey, get a mansion, believe on Jesus Christ. No, that's that's information later. And then you get into churches that you might be in today, and they lessonify what God can do for me. And then they'll turn around and wear shirts and say, I'm a child of a king, right? What kind of king will give you a room and not a mansion? See, we throw the power from ourselves away from God. If I'm a child of God, and I am by the blood of Jesus Christ, my father is king. My father is the creator of all things. He's going to give me something better than a room. And I'm not worthy of a mansion. I'm, I am worthy of a room. Father, if you can find a broom closet for me somewhere with a name janitor, I'll be happy and that would be the best that I would deserve. Even if I deserve that because you pulled me out of hell. But the love of God is I'm going to give you a mansion. The talk of man is I'll give you a room. You take the room. If it were not so, I would have told you. It's an interesting. This is the first time we're, ever see, we're, we're getting on heavenly things. And Jesus, if it was not so, I would not have told you. If there were no mansions, there would be no verse 2. You understand what Jesus is saying here? I'm going to give you guys a mansion. If it was not true, verse 2 would not even be in your Bible. I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. Well, how's that? A place, a mansion. A mansion is just a place to Jesus. I mean, if I come home and tell my family, hey, you know, we got invited to this guy's house for dinner, it's in a mansion. I'd be like, ooh, ah. He said, it's just a place. God's point of view. Believe in God, believe also in me. I'm God. I'm going to make you a mansion, but a mansion to me is just a place. That's how powerful God is. You guys, in this, this universe alone, we've got nine planets. Well, Pluto. we got an eight and a wandering planet. You know how much room in space that is for a man? And yet, there's a whole universe out there. There's, there's a whole bunch of planets and star systems and that. That's just a place. Just a place. And if I go, and he's not, he's going. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may also be. This is a new revelation. I'm going away. 
Okay? <clears throat> I'm going away. I'll read this verse very carefully now. If I go, and he went, Acts chapter 1, right? And prepare a place for you. I will come again. After Acts chapter 1, Jesus ever came back? So that's the rapture. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. So we learn in Acts chapter 1 that Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father today. What is he doing right now? He's preparing a place for you. And his place, I think it's Proverbs or Psalms. It says that a man is going to make his house and then take his bride. Jacob had to work and prepare a home for, for before he got Rachel, which he got Leah, but he got Rachel. He ended up with both of them. He had to make money. He had to. So you know what Jesus is doing right now for his bride? He's preparing that house for her. And then when he's when he's ready and fulfilling, you know, he's got all that he needs. Then they set the date. And then what a luxury we're going to have. Our honeymoon is a thousand years. And we bring God's bride, Israel, with us. Enjoy a complete thousand year reign with no enemy at all to be seen while he's locked up. So Jesus is preparing a place. That where I am, where is he? He's in heaven at the right hand of the Father. There ye may be also. So if I believe God, if I believe Jesus is God, I am going where Jesus will go to be with God. That's my eternal security. In three verses. And whether I go, ye know. And they, in the way, ye know. You know it. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? Three and a half years, every single day, he's living with, with, with Jesus, and he doesn't get it. No, 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 listen, stop mocking him. Because let's sit down and figure out how much you know about heaven and glory. Oh, wait a minute. We know more than Thomas does, according to the, John. Tom, uh, Thomas does not have a complete New Testament Bible, does he? So, is he going to go run the First Thessalonians chapter four and say, "Hey, look at it, here's the rap"? Absolutely not. Is he going, John? Yeah, come here, come here, John. Can I talk to you for a minute? What? Where's your book of Revelation? What? Oh, I want to read about New Jerusalem. What? Thomas, what have you been doing? We're not supposed to be touching that stuff. Where was Jesus now? Put that stuff... No, no, no. I, I haven't been drinking nothing. Show me a book of Revelation. It's not written. So before we go mocking Thomas, Thomas does not have what we have, a completed Bible. So Thomas asking this question in John chapter 14 of the Bible, he didn't have a... Four, stop, guys. What's wrong, Jesus? Something wrong? No, we gotta we gotta have a chapter thirteen tomorrow morning, okay? And then once we live out tomorrow, then we'll have to wait for a chapter. No, they didn't have that. Thomas is asking an important question. Now watch this. He says, We know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? Now, you ask my family as a personal testimony. Because Thomas asked the question. I can now preach in the streets of Daytona Beach, 2016. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. By Thomas's question of not having a Bible completed, I am able to preach salvation by Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ alone by He is the way. He'll never lie to you, and that's the life. I can preach that today. Why? Because Thomas spoke up and said, Lord, I got a question. And the Holy Spirit, men write the Bible, told John, write that down. Now, 
Let me ask you a question. Mean, nasty God. And I, I think every week when, I, when I'm able to preach on the street, I think every week I quote this verse. Do you realize that John the writer is going to get credit for me quoting that verse? And then Phil, I mean Thomas, keep on saying Phil. Thomas is going to be quoted by the question he had. Listen, Thomas, if you never asked that question, that verse would not be used in dealing with lost people about salvation. And people will not know that religion is not coming through the Father. Your works are not coming to the Father. People know in 2016, all the years that this Bible has been printed since King James 1611. I'm not going to go back to Let's just take King James 1611. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. You know how many people are going to be condemned to hell by that verse at the Great White Throne Judgment? Thank you, Thomas. Thank you, Thomas, for asking the question. Because now I have assurance. Now I have something that I can quote from the Bible. I can tell people how to get to the Father. And by the way, by the way, Thomas, you helped me another way too. Well, I can get to the Pope. See, Jesus, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. So if I eat and drink Jesus, you got a problem there. Because if we go back to verse 1, let your heart not be true. You believe in God, believe also in me. So you're telling me when you eat and drink Jesus, you're literally eating and drinking God. Really? They don't even believe that. Because if Jesus was God to the Catholic, how do you fit Mary in there? Thank you, Thomas. I have got a very important verse here in the Bible because you said, Jesus, I don't understand. Some questions are very good. That's a very good question. Thank you, Thomas. If you had known me, I think, woo if you had known me, three and a half years, and we don't even know when Thomas came. You should have known my father also. Oh, wow. In order to know God, you got to know Jesus. In order to know Jesus, you got to know God. Got a kind of problem there if you don't know. To, God and Jesus the difference but there is no difference and from henceforth ye know him and have seen him well, wait a minute it says somewhere else that God is a spirit yeah he is a spirit but when you look upon Jesus who do you see so how can you say he's not God Philip said, Lord, uh, uh, also, and henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. Go back to John chapter 10, verse 30 on that one. And Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father. And it suffices. Philip wants, hey, I want, I want proof. I'm a Jew. I want a sign. Perfectly right. Paul says, 1 Corinthians 1 11, I think it is. I may be wrong in that verse. Show us. Exodus 33, 18, John 20, 28, first, uh, 118, and 12, 45. Show us. Jesus said to him, I have been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? Did you read that? Philip said to the Lord, show us the capital F Father. Cut off the rest of the question. We don't need the rest of the question. Jesus said to him, Jesus said unto him, And yet thou hast not known me. Cut off the rest of the verse, 19. Philip, show us the Father. Jesus, thou hast not known me. I think Jesus just told Philip, I'm God, I'm the Father. How's that? Hmm? Verse 9. Philip says, show us the Father. And Jesus said, Hast thou not known me? That's a very, very simple statement of Jesus saying, Hey, you want to see the Father? Look at me. How's that? I want what these, I want what these verses say in the New World Translation. 
You know what I bet? I bet you it says the same thing our Bible says. Because they're too stupid. They're too foolish to know that. So, thou hast not known me, Philip. He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou, show us the Father? Just backed up what I just told you. When you look in my face, Philip, you see God. Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? Now that's where the, that's where they'll blow it. Well, see, he didn't say he, no. I and the Father are one. John ten thirty. But that Trinity part of God we can't explain. I can't explain it. But the best way I could explain it is someone told me one time: one times one times one equals one. But you got three ones. Explain it. I can't. Absolutely cannot. I can't take how you take hydrogen, <coughs> which is a gas that burns. You take oxygen, which is a gas that burns. You take two hydrogens and an oxygen and put it together properly, and it puts a fire out. You want me to explain God, and I can't explain H2O and how it has chemical properties that burn. When I, and then when Jesus told Nicodemus, hey, listen, if you can't understand the earthly things, John chapter 3. How are you going to get the heavenly thing? I, I stand in that. I can't explain it. And see the Jehovah Witnesses, they want an explanation for something there is none. Well, here's the question. For every Bible-believing Christian, my wife, myself, my daughter, and my son, and everybody else in my family that's saved and born again. Will we see God? Yes. How? Jesus. But will we see God? No. He's a spirit. But will we see God? Yes, Jesus. But will we see God? No, he's a spirit. Both answers are correct when you're dealing with God. Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. But the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. So God has generated the whole works. Now see... There is the Father and there is the Son. Okay? But the fa Father is the Son and the Son is the Father, but there's still a distinction between the two. What? I don't know. But Jesus is God and God is Jesus. And Jesus is the Son and God is the Father. We're going to stop there. That's all I know. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Remember when he said the works testify, John is testified, the Father's testify, and the works testify. Philip, as a Jew, everything that you've seen the three and a half years, yes. Do you believe I did that through God? No one else could have. Then fine, you're safe. How safe is Philip? All right. Thomas. Thomas keeps changing his name. I don't know if he knew that, but he has a new name called Phil. We've seen the resurrected Jesus. Really? Unless I put my finger in, in his prints, I won't believe. Thomas. Oh, Phil. No, we're not talking about Philip now. Philip stepped in. All right, we're talking about... I'm getting Thomas and Philip mixed up. Philip is a Jew... That Paul says, I need a sign. Moses said, God, they're not going to listen to me. They're not going to believe me. Even after saying, I am that I am. He said, what's in your hand? A rod. Put it down. <laughs> snake. Do that before the Jews. Never has a rod ever turned to a snake. It did three times. Four times. Moses, Israel. Pharaoh three times all right put your hand inside your shirt hmm. huh. all right man has gotten leprosy Israel's seen that now put it back in your shirt Ooh. they have they have never seen leprosy get healed you know the funny thing I realized too I need to confess as a sinner 
Remember I told you that no one in the Bible has ever, ever been healed of leprosy but Naaman? Miriam? Yeah, Miriam too. And Moses. His hand was leper. He put it back in and came out just as a newborn flesh. Seven days for Miriam. And that was all before the law. Or in the law of Miriam. Jews require a sign. Philip is saying, hey, Lord, I'm a Jew. You got to show me. And God will never rebuke them. Because that's how they were based on. That's what Moses did to them. And then the water turned to blood. And then all those plagues that affected Egypt. The Jews were say, wow, that is God. And there were some plagues that happened to Egypt that did not happen to the Jew. You know why those stories are recorded over and over and over in the Old Testament? For those Jews, remember that that's God. That manna came down only for the Jews. And it was brought up in the Gospel of John. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Or else believe me for the, for the, the very work's sake. God has been working with Israel with miracles ever since their foundation. With Moses. Remember the Pharisees? They just love Moses. Well here's a prophet liken to Moses who's doing the miracles come on part in the Red Sea is nothing compared to what Jesus has done in three and a half years Moses died Get, uh, Michael came down and grabbed the body something happened there in Jude I don't know I don't understand but no man has died that ever raised his own body like Jesus will. Enoch, one day he's there, next minute he's gone. But Enoch never raised his dead body. Elijah was raptured, right? He's coming back to physically die and he's going to raise not by his power, but by the power of God. We're coming to the death, burial, and resurrection. What Jesus is going to do and has done already, no man has ever done. Come on, sit in your chair and say, it is finished and die. Try it. If God don't want you dead, you ain't going to die. The day, the date, the year, and the time purpose for your death as Jesus. I guarantee, I don't know what second Jesus died. He knew. I guarantee the second that he was supposed to die, he died. On that second, not a second before or a second after. Try that. I'm going to put a gun to my brain. Well, you ain't going to die. The second that you, oh, I'm going to wait to, uh, it's, I'm going to wait to 12.05 and when the second hand's on the eight. Good luck. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go to the Father. Works are for the Jews. Works. Not for the church age. You know why we're not, you know why this is not church age doctrine? Because we don't go by works. Not of works, at least any man boasts. You know, if, if the church age today, if we were saved by work, once we get to heaven, we'd be bragging like we're doing here on the earth. Uh, we had more people at VBS than you guys had. We had more people saved in that city than we had. I did more of that tent meeting than your, your tent meeting. I preached to more people that meeting. I got more people angry than you got. Ah, blah, 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 blah. Not by works. And whatsoever ye ask in my Father's name. Wait a minute. Let's go back. Because this verse is taken out of context. Really, I'm serious. Philip said to the Lord, Show us the Father. Jesus said unto him, Speaking to Philip, 
speaking to Philip, and whatsoever ye, now the twelve disciples, I'm not going to say eleven, I don't know if Judas is there, whatsoever ye ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. So these disciples going about asking things in Jesus' name, in God's name, to be glorified through the Father by the Son. So if I today, at the church age, walk up to God and say, God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I name it and claim it. I tell you right now, all the angels in heaven will be laughing their butt off. They'll be in tears, historical. If they have any pain, which I don't think they do, I think their gut will be laughing. Jesus is speaking to a bunch of men who are going to go out in the book of Acts who don't have no Bible. And he says in, in Mark 16, Doing all these signs that, that they, uh, let me, I want to read that one correctly. That, I want to get correct. Before I quote that word. Confirming something. I want to get it correct. And confirming the word with signs following. So they're going to go out not for lust, James chapter 3, I think it is, or 2. They're going to ask things not for themselves of the Father by the Son, but that the word may be confirmed and glorified to God. When Peter and I forget it's James or John walk in the temple, there's a man there is lame. That guy gets up and walks, and he walks in that temple. God gets glory by them seeking God, say, Hey, Lord, can you confirm your word by helping this gentleman to walk? And we're going to take him in the temple. I like that because that man's going to glorify me. Those people are going to glorify me. Okay, Peter, I'll ask what you give. Now, if Peter was sat there or John or Jane, whichever. Man, God, can you give me that double barrel camel that, man, it goes from zero to 60 right down the road. Man, he carries water for 50 days. For what? Because we're going to have camel racing. That would be for the loss. See, he's coming to his death. He's coming to his burial. He's coming to the resurrection. He's going to leave 11 men. Boom. It's your turn now. To a nation that requires signs that even one of his own said, Lord, I got to see. I got to touch. So he's got to give them the power of prayer through the Father by him to say, hey, these are for your people, God. We ain't got a clean, complete Bible. Now, why can't I go to a guy and say, hey, take off your smelly shirt with your armpits. You knocked me down the ground. I'm here. Why can't that happen? Because I got a complete Bible. And in my Bible says, if I shall live godly, I shall suffer persecution. I've got a complete Bible where I go to Job and the Bible says, hey, you see how great Job is? Oh, but God, you know, let me touch him. We'll see how great he is. Be careful with your pride. Don't go be bragging about how well you are, God, because Satan will be, okay, let me. You know, there was a list on everything that Job had. I wonder who came up with that list. Because after we're told all the animals, all the stuff, then we, had, then we see the conversation between God and Satan. Somebody was bragging about their goods. And no sooner, for a few verses later, that little list that he had started disappearing one by one. Whatsoever you shall ask in my father's name, don't don't go name claim this one. That will I will I do. This is a prayer bubble gum. You put your prayer quarter in the slot and then you get upset because you didn't get the right colored bubble gum. According to James, sometimes you put your prayer quarter in the in the thing and you don't get nothing. You just lose your quarter. Sometimes later on, you'll put your prayer quarter in that thing, you'll turn it, you won't get, and you'll come back a year later, and then that bubble gum comes out. And then it may not be the color you want. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. So now, when you follow those disciples in the book of Acts, nowhere is this given to Paul. All right, let's say, let, let's put it to Paul. Whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, will I. Didn't Paul record to ask God three times about an ailment in his life? 
Will that will I do that the Father may be glorified? Don't you think Paul would have gave God the glory if he got rid of that, in that, that whatever it was? So see, this is not to Paul. This is not to us. This is to the disciples. Peter never used it for love. He's in jail one day. James was just murdered. You know what Peter's doing? He's having a great prayer meeting. He is not. He's in jail sleeping while a whole bunch of other people are praying. And how much do they believe? Rhoda, go get the door. What's wrong? Did our prayer get answered? No, Peter's ghost is at the door. And didn't Jesus always say, with the, you guys lack faith? What are you doing lacking faith? How come you didn't believe? They were having a prayer meeting without faith. And if ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. That's a prayer promise. But not to me. But yet, I have next to this verse, and I'm not claiming this verse. I have a ministry wife and to be faithful. I haven't been as faithful as I should have been. I guess I make God a liar. Come on. Is it me or was it God that was unfaithful? How dare I even thank God? It was a time in between my life that I didn't have a wife. Was that my fault? Or was that God's fault? I'm just putting here that this is to remind me to pray. Now here's, uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. If you love me, keep my commandments. <coughs> In the Gospel of John, you know what the commandment Jesus gives them? Love, love one another. See, 13, 14 is very important, but let's not do 15. I will pray the Father. Now, we're going to learn something new else here. Excuse my throat, kids. I will pray the Father. You, I, I just give I just given you guys the twelve, the eleven, a great prayer token. If so ever you ask in my name, I'm gonna do it. But here's a heavenly prayer: I will pray to Father, and He shall give you another Comforter. Jesus is gonna pray and ask God for something. He's going to ask for a comforter for these 11 men who are going to go out. They're going to need it. That he may abide with you forever. I can claim that one. Verse 26 real quick. But the comforter which is the Holy Ghost. I got the Holy Spirit. Indwelling. Abide with you forever. The Holy Spirit abides in me. He has come in and taken up residence and said, This is it. I ain't never evade. I'm not ever evacuating myself. I am not ever going to evict myself. I ain't never going to move in, move out. How's that for a dweller of God? Even the spirit of truth. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth. The Bible records that God's impossible, cannot, will not ever. You have a threefold spirit in you. God who can never lie will not lie. You have the spirit of truth. And then you have Jesus Christ who is the truth. How dare you speak about the Easter Bunny, Santa Claus, and call out from sick from work when you've never been sick that day. And John 8 44 tells us about the liar. Now you want to go between the Trinity between God and the Son and the Son who is God. Let's go with with the quadrity that man has. 
I have a God who's incapable of lying. I have Jesus Christ who is the truth. I have the Holy Spirit that is the spirit of truth. And then I invite Satan and come lie to people. Explain that one. Before we start talking about the Trinity of God. How I let Satan in the Holy Trinity. When we lie. And you need to realize when we lie, it is threefold in our nature, the born-again Bible-believing Christian, that we have three against one when it comes to lying. And Satan has already been defeated. Except for when we lie. And when we take the lie, we take the father of lies, Satan. When it comes to that lie, we have a threefold battle battle three against one and why can't God win even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive so Paul says there's another spirit and when they have that spirit they're lying to you because the world does not come into Jesus for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten that's not saved people because the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive that word that for God so loved the world he gave his only begotten those are people who are lost I'm saved now I don't need Jesus Christ to die for me anymore he's already died once for me I don't need the gospel being preached to me no more I'm already got it I've already received it I've already got the Holy Spirit I am no more of the world Satan has blinded the people of the world Either first or second Corinthians 4 4 so we either stand in the world or we're standing is in Christ either we have or we have not the Spirit of God that's it and when you look at anybody who says I'm saved you can't judge judge not least you be judged if I don't see the Holy Spirit working in your life, manifesting in your life, there's trouble. There is trouble. Remember the fruits of the Spirit? Remember the works of the flesh, Ephesians? Neither, uh, even the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not. Wait a minute. How do you see a Spirit? You say, Stiley, you're hard on people and they're judging their salvation. How do you see the Spirit? How do you see someone saved, according to James? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, patience. Now I'm missing four other fruit. Temperance. I'm missing three other spirit fruits. If I don't see the Holy Spirit working in your life, that's how you see the Spirit of God. Other than that, you can't see a Spirit. Seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but he know him, for he dwelleth with you, not in you yet. And it's coming, I think now a little bit later, he's going to say he breathed on them. And that's a practice among some churches today. Have you have the Holy Spirit breathe on you? No, I've had this Holy Spirit come in and move in on me. When he breathes on them, I don't know if this chapter or not. It's before the death, burial, and resurrection. After the death, burial, and resurrection upon the gospel, Jesus died for my sins, was buried, and arose again. According to the scriptures, I received that to be saved. For with the heart man believes on the righteousness, with the mouth confessed made unto salvation. Then the Holy Spirit says, okay, I moved in. Now you are adopted, Father, God, Abba. You are now a child of the King. Can I ever lose my soul? Why? I can't. The Holy Spirit dwelling forever in me. In me. So when I sin, I am putting this Holy Spirit of God to sin. Come on. If I was a Christian, I'm saved, purely saved, and I'm drinking beer, I'm making the Holy Spirit drink beer. How's that? I'd like to be judged on that one. If I'm looking at pornography, I'm making the Holy Spirit see those things still. Oh, come on. Wait to be judged on that one. If I'm sleeping in, in, in a bed that's not my spouse's bed, you're making the Holy Spirit do that. How about that? Let's judge about that. 
Holy Spirit, if I breathe in smoke, I'm not supposed to be breathing. You're making the Holy Spirit do that. If I tell lies, you are going against the spirit of truth. Come on, all sin is sin. And you got the Holy Spirit indwelling in you, living in you, and your sin, we're all sin, all have come to short of glory of God. How can you revive that Holy Spirit by the word, by confessing your sin? That's the only thing that gives the Holy Spirit life. So in your life today, which has more muscles, your flesh or the Holy Spirit? And I'm sorry to say, even in my own life, the Holy Spirit gets put down many times. I'm flesh. I'm a sinner. We all are. And when times of, of trouble and tri trials and tribulation comes up, is that Holy Spirit able by your life doing what you're supposed? Does He ever come? Don't worry, I got this. You know, we got a battle going on. Paul says between the flesh and the spirit. Who wins? With you and shall be, shall be shall be in you later on acts 5 3 and 4 the disciples go ahead disciples ask anything in my name and the father gives you it's with you but shall be in you know you know what this just told you about 13 that prayer whatever you pray is going to be out matter of fact james who is one of the disciples right there listening to tells you about prayer after the death burial and resurrection three three or four scripture with scripture will put these things in line they're going to get the holy spirit the comforter amen and glory to god how do you know that that comforter i can well style you said well this prayer life is not for me right now it's for the disciple how do you know that that comforter is the holy spirit you get that shall be in you and paul tells me that that holy spirit dwells in me as it going to dwell in them in Acts chapter 5. So that's the comforter. The comforter come with them at first. Then he went in them after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And Jesus was ascended to the Father. And if you want to see a time with the Holy Spirit, with, with foul religions and stuff like that, just go to YouTube, YouTube videos and watch. Barking at the moon and everything else. I will not leave you comforted. Now, wait a minute. Okay, we're talking about the Holy Spirit. I will not leave you comforted. If Je let's say Jesus never left, never ascended, would they be comfortless? Well, Jesus lived with them forever. No, they, they'd be, hey, here he is. But he's telling them, Acts chapter 1, I'm going. I'm going to leave you guys. I'm going to put you on your own. Mother Eagle. You know what an eagle does? She throws... The little baby eaglets out of the nest and, blah, 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 and catches them just before they hit the ground. And she does that. She throws them out, throws them out, catches them, brings them out, throws them out, catches them. And one time those eagles, those those wings have gotten strong, those feathers got right, then they fly off. This is what Jesus is going to do. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world sees me no more. That little while is a few days. When he's in the tomb behind the rock. And the world sees me no more. But ye see me. Because I live. Ye shall live also. This is interesting. The last time the world will see Jesus when he's on the cross. It almost looks like that he never appeared to anybody after the resurrection, just to the ones that believed him. Among those 500 people, and maybe just people who believed, and he didn't go walking up to Pilate and say, how do you do? Remember me? He didn't walk into the Holy of Holies. You know, can you imagine Jesus? Now, what, now let's think about this for a minute. Let's say he would have walked into that Holy Temple with the curtain been rent and say, how you doing? He would have been the Antichrist. Remember he predicted that? So he didn't walk in on the priest saying, do you guys want to repent now? When Jesus was resurrected, according to that verse right there, he didn't go to any people who were unsaved. 
How's that for a Bible doctor? They have to believe by what the word with these disciples are going out they're going to preach. Remember when, remember when they arrested Peter, James, or John? Don't preach this man's name. But they couldn't, they, they as a council could not affirm the resurrection only by what people said. That was it. They didn't see it. Paul was the only one ever to see the resurrected Christ. And that's it. He didn't come back in your breakfast cereal. He didn't come in your tree during a hurricane. He didn't come in your butter. No one will see Jesus Christ according to John 14. So when somebody pulls a piece of toast out of their toaster and they see Jesus' face, that's a bunch of crock, put the butter on it. And eat it. Uh, I wouldn't say that. He said, go ahead and eat Jesus. No, I said, that was a flying, go ahead and eat It's a piece of toast. Jesus said, on, uh, command, where was I? A little while, and the world sees me no more. But ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. At that day, ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye are in me, and I in you. That day when he did, from the upper room, to the ascension. He that has my commandments, the word. They're going to these men are going to write the word. Peter, James, John, Matthew. The men he is talking to are there it is. He that has my commandments keep with them. He that loveth me, he that loveth me shall be loved of my father. I will love him and manifest myself to him. I've never seen Jesus, but he has been manifested to me. He is alive and well through his word. By doing what God has told me to do, he is manifested in these pages in my life. We just had Hurricane Matthew come through here. I can walk around my house and say, wow, peace be still. I can go on the street and do what God's told me to do. Say, hey, honey, see the Bible performed in our life in that one? Man, it wasn't for a constitution in the United States. They would, they would jail me. Judas says on him, not Iscariot. So no more do you ever see a child ever named Judas unless you're just totally sick. And yet there's a rock band called Judas Priest. Go read the origin of how he named that. Why they named that band that. You'll be quite interested. Lord, how is it that thou will manify, manifold thyself unto us and not unto the world. Judas, thank you for another good question, chapter 14. Two great questions. Lord, how can I know if that man's saved or not? No, I don't judge him. You don't have no right to judge if he's saved or lost. Well, Lord, how are we going to know? The division between thyself and the world. Jesus answered, said unto him, to Judas, who asked the question, If a man love me, he will keep my words. Now, let me get off picking on people. Since I don't like people me doing that, but I'll, 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 I'll do another avenue of the branch. What if you got a perverted Bible? That changes the word of God. If a if a man love me, he will love he will keep my word. If a man love me, he will. What's the division between those that will those that are manifest to you or those that are of the world? If you love me, you will keep my word. Anybody who changes the Bible does not love God. And strong possibility, I say, with Scripture, you're not saved. Because if you were saved, you wouldn't change it. Now, I will admit, before this tape, and everyone audio on that, I mess up when I read the Bible. I'm human. But I'm not doing it purposely. I'm not going in here with a racer or whiteout 
or putting a little carrot and putting, you know, this word should be this. I am making innocent errors, which I will be judged for. I'm telling you right now, if I misread a word, I guarantee I will be judged for it because I have changed the word of God, but I'm not doing it purposely. I'm laying out for the fact you sit here and say, all right, this doesn't need to be here. This is better than Hebrew. This is better than Greek. We need to remove this. Oh, we got to add this. You don't love Jesus. So everyone who is on a Bible correcting committee, council, whatever it is, I will say to you, you don't love Jesus, according to that verse. I didn't say that. The Bible said, I will keep the word of God. Thy word I have hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee. I know an entire television production game show doesn't love God. I just think I just see my wife nod her head. They don't even know the difference between a rabbit and a lizard. Oh, he is not a lizard. I'm gonna tell you something right now. This may be harsh. And it's funny how one person just popped in my head. You may say you're saved, but you ain't keeping the word. You ain't living the word. You don't love Jesus. Your Bible takes out the blood. Oh, he got a King James Bible. In the back seat of the car. With all the garbage. Now, I can have the right. Listen, I'm talking about someone really, really close to my family. I don't have any fellowship with. So we'll say I'm, I'm pointing other people. I can point close, close people. I know one person very close to my heart has, has not ever believed in Jesus Christ, and he's gonna go to hell if he doesn't. I know one person right now in my family. I don't think he's saved. I think he was. Someone else saved him. That hurts. That hurts. When I read passages like this, you know, like, I'm looking at your life. So don't you tell me, oh, you're, you're touching someone, my, I'm touching people in my own family, okay? There's another one. Your life doesn't prove it. Your life doesn't prove it. Your very words, your conduct. Boy, I got another strong name in my. And it saddens me because these people, I think that when they die, I think they're going to stand at God and say, But didn't I? I never knew you. And I've dealt with those people personally. And I, my hands are shaking right now. Because I don't believe by the word. And my father will love him. You want the God to love you? You keep his word. Memorize scripture. Memorize the scripture not because your Sunday school teacher makes it. Because you want to memorize scripture for the work of God for something to do. I was on fire like that one day. It's dying down. But I just want to memorize scripture. That one in Nehemiah that, where he stood the post. He carried his sword. You know why I remember that? that verse I had it memorized I don't today when you memorize verses keep on going they, they will die out because the sword is the word of God and I want to be on my post I want to carry the sword and work you know I memorized that verse because everywhere I went when I worked for the submarine builder I carried the Bible in my pocket and I read the Bible too I only did not just carry it I read it and it's funny because it was an NIV. I didn't realize it later. My father will love him. And we will. Can God love someone who's lost and rejected Jesus Christ? Can he? No. For God so loved the word, the world. That's past tense. That's Calvary. Don't come to me and tell me, that, you know, God loves you and you're not saved. My father will love him. And we, and we, and we, oh, there's that trinity. 
There's Jesus saying there's God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Ghost, which I just spoke to you about. We will come unto him and make our abode with him. Oh, Jesus has told me not only do I get the Holy Spirit, but I get God indwelling with me now. Isn't that great? That is so wonderful that when I cheat somebody in business, God is cheating them too. Yes. Right. Oh. I got the joy, joy, joy down deep in my heart. And people say today, don't do business with Christian men or women. Yes. Even I fall in that category. Because they'll cheat you just as much as a worldly person cheats you. And used car salesmen, by the way, too. I'll tell you that. He that loveth me not, keepeth not my sayings. And the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father which sent me. The world will have nothing to do with the word of God. We don't want to hear that. Turn them up. Shut them up. Keep it down. Go somewhere else. You don't love God. God doesn't love you. Oh, God loves us. He just want to do what you're doing. You don't realize what you're saying. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. He's going away. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. Who's your Sunday school teacher? Mrs. Jones, Mrs. Smith, Mr. Salami. No, it's not. If that man loves the word of God, that man is doing the Father's will, loves God, God loves him. Mr. Holy Ghost inside of his heart is teaching him. You better make sure you got a good church and a church that loves God because it's not the pastor, it's not the Sunday school teacher. It's the Holy Ghost in them working to teach you by them. How's that? Well, you say, well, my church is not that good. There's nowhere else we can go and... I'm learning things then that's the Holy Ghost inside you teaching you remember you got the Holy Ghost in you too he's teaching you things you can be yeah you can go up you can be sitting at the bus waiting for the bus to come you know hey that memory verse Just watch watch he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. If a man love me, he will keep my words. He will bring all things to remembrance. Scripture memorification is of the Holy Spirit, you love in Jesus. I learned my memory verse. No, you did The Holy Spirit taught you and the Holy Spirit brought the remembrance. Give him the credit. Did you just get that? The Holy Spirit taught you taught teach the Holy Spirit taught you that memory verse how's that give him the credit you just do something one day you just you just think about Jesus on the cross you just think about a Bible story something about who did that Jesus you love the word and the Holy Ghost bring things to remembrance Count your many blessings, name them one by one. Why would you bring those in remembrance? Because the Holy Spirit's working. He's teaching. Remember? Remember that time we got you through that mess? Well, we're in a lot of mess. Remember what God did for you? Remember what I am? Yeah, you're the comforter. Didn't, I, didn't we get you out of a mess before? Yes. Relax. We're trying to teach you something new. Maybe more faith. Maybe just. So when you have the Lord's Supper, that's to remind you what Jesus has done. That's to remind you that Jesus is coming. That Lord's Supper is to be all Holy Ghost comforter. Because that Lord's Supper is to remind you what Jesus has done. Is to remind you that he is coming. Remind you that you're a sinner. That bread that grape juice it's supposed to remind you of everything that Jesus has done because you are in iniquity peace I leave with you my peace I give unto you 
not as the world giveth, uh, not as the world giveth. Oh, the world does have a peace. But it's not the peace of God. And one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit is what? Peace. Give eye unto you. Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, can give you peace. 